You make me sound like one of those toddlers on Old Enough, like walking around with my little flag downtown, <laughs> like making sure the cars stop. It's like for the me. SNL skit. Yeah, <laughs> just <laughs> dropping apples. Hello and welcome to the Worldwide Honeymoon Travel Podcast, the podcast that talks about all things couples travel, including destinations, tips, advice, and more. I'm Chris. I'm Kat. And this is episode number 195. 195. Almost to the 200th. I was going to say, is there something that I'm missing with no. 195? Um, yeah, so what's been up? Uh, within the past 24 hours? Yeah. Um, it has snowed more. Yeah. That's... I mean, it it was Cleveland a weekday. Cleveland has day. a rat problem now. No, I um I don't know. I went to work. It was it was a fairly mundane weekday, in all honesty. Yeah, same. I was writing um some of my last posts for France Voyager for uh the the rest of 2022. I mean, I'll be writing next month for January, but like it's cool when you're like I finished Worldwide Honeymoon. All of the articles that are going to go out in December, um. Yeah, and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm pretty much done with Worldwide Honeymoon content, except for the podcast through what, the end of the year. What articles can we look forward to? Uh, we can look forward... Or are for- you allowed to say? I mean, it's my stuff. I know, but like, are you ready to give like the peek behind the curtain sort of thing? I mean, they're all very different articles. There's a gorilla trekking packing list to look forward to. Um, there is a Costa Rica honeymoon resorts, um, a Rome honeymoon guide and i can't remember the last one Ooh, a mystery oh, oh article. sorry january honeymoon destinations awesome yeah so you guys can look forward to that this coming month i am going so when i was like ooh, a mystery article going back to our candy discussion airheads do you remember the white airhead yeah it was always like blue raspberry i believe it was cherry mm. maybe they made it differently in kentucky um go blue right maybe yeah. that's why they did it um airheads are an underrated candy did you like airheads yeah i did how would you eat an airhead um i would just take a bite and keep taking bites you may recall that this is a wrapped candy did well, you open yeah. it or ju- just take a bite and keep taking well, bites you- after I opened it, I would take a bite. Like I didn't like roll it or do anything. Oh, weird. I was a I was a roller That's for my airhead. No head. surprise. <laughs> um, best airhead. When your flavor. favorite candy is is Mambas. <laughs> no. <laughs> I I have never been more disrespectful. Yeah, and that's on. That's on the recording. It's on record now. Yeah, it's on Yikes. record. Yikes! Yikes! Um, the proper way to eat an airhead is to roll it, and the best flavor, watermelon. The green. Gross. That's like easily the worst flavor. The blue. Blue raspberry. Perhaps we're thinking of different candies. The blue is the best. In what universe does blue raspberry beat watermelon? Every universe. No. Yeah. Green was the worst flavor. That was always the one like people would eat the mystery one over the watermelons. I feel bad for you. Okay. That you cannot properly identify it's delicious It's fine. When your flavors. favorite chocolate bar is Three Musketeers. Uh, that is not true. Or um, Mounds. Almond Joy. Oh, gross. That's even worse. <laughs> Actually, 100 grand is up there for me. Okay. That one's okay. Oh, wow. That can, that well, can slide. Wow. Thank you for your approval, Candy King. <laughs> <laughs> um, well... Do you have a highlight in the past 24 hours? Um, well, I don't know. I just made my Christmas list and sent that, you know, your parents for the holidays and let you look at it too. And uh, yeah. I have not seen this. I don't know what you're talking oh, about. Oh, well, I need to give it to you. <laughs> I'm good. I already know what I'm getting you. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I did all of your shopping. I finished all of my Christmas shopping, just all of it, even our nephews. So... Yeah. Wow. Feels good to be it feels good to be done. Like I like to get it done early in the season. Get it done. That way when we decorate, there's presents to put under the tree. So what a show off. It's nice. I even did a little shopping for myself just for the Christmas markets. I bought a couple sweaters. 
They were on sale. Splendid. Yeah. Great. I thought you were going to judge and you're going to be like, well, we got to get rid of two sweaters in the closet. Chris got really into the Marie Kondo thing when it was in its heyday. And like, I have a closet and half and Chris has half a closet. And anytime we get something new, you're always like, we should get rid of something. And I'm like, absolutely not. I wear everything. So first of all, you do not. And second of all, I'm not going to make you get rid of two sweaters just because you bought three new ones. Okay. You need to get rid of three sweaters (laughs) because you bought three new ones. Um, I bought two sweaters and a pair of jeans. All right. Well. Not skinny jeans. I only own one pair of not skinny jeans. And I was just hoping that that trend would like disappear, but it's here to stay. So I bought another pair of not skinny jeans. Great. Yeah. Well, that has been a fascinating 24 hours. Great. Did a little shopping for myself, online shopping. Um, did not get on the Taylor Swift presale list. I was on the wait list. So I got to sit and watch um, the in- drama unfold with that. And, uh, and the crashing of Ticketmaster and all that stuff. So here's hoping I get some tickets tomorrow with the Capital One presale. Oh, well. Yeah. I am on the edge of my seat. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, uh, today's article, not article, (laughs) I was talking about the blog too much. Um, Today's podcast episode correlates to an article that I have written on the blog several years ago about traveling solo while in a relationship. And we thought, hey, why not turn this into sort of a podcast episode, talk about our experiences Mostly because while I have traveled solo quite a few times, Christopher just did his little first solo trip. Okay. First of all, stop calling it my little solo trip. Sorry. I don't know why I called it a little. You make me <laughs> sound. You. So cute. Yeah. <laughs> you make me sound like one of those toddlers on Old Enough, like walking around with my little flag downtown, <laughs> like making sure the cars stop. It's like the me. SNL skit. Yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> dropping <laughs> apples. At like hopelessly, like hopelessly having them roll down the hill. I am a capable adult. No, I know. <laughs> my, my little solo trip. Okay, I meant walking you're... myself around on a leash. <laughs> Goodness. Well, this was your first time, and I know how intimidating it can be because I've traveled. Like my first time traveling solo, I was nervous about everything. Okay, let's kind of set the scene here. Number one, it was for work. Yeah. Number two. But you really weren't around your colleagues very much, except for when sure you presented. Sure I was. Well, no, I was working out of our offices. No, I know. But like you definitely like ate dinner by yourself. You walked around by yourself. Like you did things by yeah, yourself. I, I had some evenings to myself. You traveled to and from by yourself. Oh, and this I is... did such a good job. Oh my gosh, stop. Um, But no, I guess like as far as solo trips go, hey, this kind of this counts. Yeah, I think there there was um th- there were definitely moments where I had um I had time to myself. Yeah. So yeah, on your little solo trip. <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> um. So we're gonna talk a little bit about some of our points about why you can travel solo while in a relationship. I know that Christopher's was for work. Um, I have done solo travel for both work and just for fun. And there's many reasons why you can embrace solo travel, not just, you know, excluding traveling together. But in addition to traveling together, you can sometimes, whether it's a weekend getaway or something like that. Or you're just sick of the other one. No. Oh, my gosh. No. Um, But if you just if you want to go someplace and they don't, whatever, um, why you can and should. Why you can and should travel solo while in a relationship. Um, my first point was that you guys are two independent people in a relationship. And that doesn't mean all of our interests line up, all of our passions line up. Now, obviously, our core values and things like that line up. But when it comes to, for example, traveling for a race, I do that with you. But like, like if I... Yeah, I would go and like support you and stuff. But if you're doing like a run club, I don't know what I'm trying to say. But (laughs) some of our passions don't always like line up and our interests line up. So if there's a specific hobby or thing that you want to do and I'm not available for it, go for it. You know what I mean? Um, 
And it's also just nice to get a little me time. It's nice to be by yourself and feel comfortable eating alone and feel comfortable in your own company. Like you, you learn a lot when you're traveling by yourself and there's really no one to have a conversation with and you're just kind of sitting there with your own thoughts getting to know yourself more and things you like to do while traveling versus not traveling. So it's kind of nice to discover that um, when you travel solo uh, by yourself, whether you're in a relationship or not. But I'm curious on your trip, was there anything differently that you did specifically than if we were together traveling to um, Naples, Florida is where you were at? Anything differently that I did that I would not have necessarily done if you were with me? Mm -hmm. Hmm. That's a good question. I will say that I, one of the nights I did not know where I was going to get dinner. So I just kind of walked around. Mm -hmm. Um, Now, because I walked around, I missed like happy hour prices, right? Like half off certain things, which I mean, that's my own wandering. Um, But I think when we tend to travel together, we kind of um, will either like look at local guides or something like that to try and find like the little hidden gems. And this was more just like I was walking around. I was looking at menus outside of restaurants And I finally just decided to like go into one Um, rather than um, planning like where I was going to go, no matter um, like if I had to wait, if if like I had to, I don't know, um, like sit inside, sit outside. Like I was looking for a place that wasn't terribly crowded, that I could just kind of like sit at the bar and have a meal to myself sort of thing rather than like having to get a table and like maybe wait around and and all of that like more just like a low key Mm -hmm. um looking for something that I wanted to have um I guess that that would be the the thing that I did differently sure um and I would say that kind of brings up point number two where you get to embrace your own travel style when you travel solo this is your time where you can be I guess quote unquote selfish but you know you're not really being selfish when it's literally just you there. Um, you get to do what you want. If you are a person that likes to sleep in, you can sleep in. If you are a person that likes to get up early and go see the sights, you can go do that. Um, you're not on anyone else's time frame but your own. Um, if, if your dream vacation is to sit at a resort and relax and read a book and go swimming, you can do that. Or if you're a city, um, a city hopper and you like to go and, and see all the sites and do go, go, go from sunup to sundown, you can do that. I mean, it's nice to be able to to kind of embrace your own travel style uh, because that doesn't always match up uh, with your partner. Um, I mean, I think ours are pretty similar for the most part, but I do like to sleep unless if it's a place I really want to see and got to get up early and go. You are an early riser and you are a morning person through and through. And this is actually something that I don't know if you have correct in your article. Okay. You paint this picture of like, you like to get up, you like to go, 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 see all these sites. And I like to do one thing in the morning and one thing in the afternoon. I am an early riser, like you said. So, um, yeah. Put a little respect I on I think that, that your travel style has evolved over time, though. Because I, I remember, I wrote this article a while ago. Yeah. And... Our first couple of trips we took together, you were very much like when we went to New York, when we went to Toronto, it was like we get up early or we get up, we do one morning activity, we have lunch, we do an afternoon activity, we have dinner, maybe get a drink somewhere. I feel like you had a very structured, it has to be this instead of like, oh, let's wander around and like, let's go check out all the sites and do the things. And, And there's nothing wrong with either yeah method it's just when you're on your own you get to just do what you want i am still not a huge wanderer like as like small as the like me wandering around and looking for a place to eat Mm -hmm. sounds like that is not me whatsoever okay i am yeah i'm just like not a wanderer so that was that was something that was like very small but like also outside of my comfort zone and like outside of like how i would typically go about something sure yeah, and that's another, yeah, you can embrace your own um, getting outside of your own comfort zone um, when you're by yourself. 
uh, because you don't need anyone else's permission to do that as far as like if you want to go bungee jumping or something like that (laughs) versus, um, you know, having someone with you where you got to agree to do things um, and and stuff like that. Not that there isn't compromise involved in traveling together. Right. Um, But yeah, there's just that benefit of when you travel by yourself, you get to embrace your own travel style the way you want to travel. You get to do a lot of the things that you'd like to do that maybe you wouldn't always do um, if you were traveling together as a couple with friends, family, like that. Yes. Yeah. I think that that's, I think that that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, number three, this is just practical. Sometimes your schedules just don't always align. Sure. I mean, that makes a lot of sense. I was really, really busy getting a lot of work stuff done before this upcoming trip. So I did not come with you to Naples. Um, I mean, I could have, I guess I, yeah, I could have flown down with you and hung out and stuff, but I just know if I was traveling, I would not get as much work done and I had a lot to get done. And I also wanted to stay here with our cat and, you know, cause I feel like he's been going back and forth to your parents a lot lately between all these trips and things that have been going on. And I feel like it's just nice for him to stay home for a bit sure. in his environment. So it was nice to kind of stay back for that. But a lot of the time, I mean, for the most part, we try to travel together as much as we can, especially for worldwide honeymoon content trips. Um, Like this year, going to Italy, going to Uganda and Kenya, things like that. Um, The reason why Chris really doesn't come with me to a lot of these France Voyager trips and trips uh, to France is mostly because your schedule just doesn't really allow it. You you work full time or you have a full time job. uh, You only have four weeks off a year, which is pretty generous in, in the U.S., but still there's only so much you can do at that time. And whenever I'm traveling, which is quite a you know, a good amount during the year. Um, sometimes that means you can't always make it on those trips. Yeah. Yeah. And and aside from that, because I'm a full-time blogger and, and then you've got a full-time job, but um, even if you're a couple that like one of you only gets three weeks off, another gets four or five weeks, you have different time off, you know, you don't need to sacrifice your, your time off benefit um, because your partner doesn't get that. I mean, travel with them if you'd like to when you guys both have the time off, but if you have time off and they don't, you can always go and go on your own solo trip somewhere and embrace that travel solo lifestyle um, and check out a new place. Maybe they're not necessarily interested in going to during that time um, instead of having to forfeit that extra time off um, because your partner doesn't have that. Yeah. Uh, The fourth one is it builds support and trust uh, because communication is key when you're basically doing long distance while you're solo traveling. Um, I'm pretty sure we talked every single night and throughout the day a little bit Yeah. while you were in, um, in Naples and yeah, I mean, we used to be a long distance couple our first year of our relationship. I, um, lived about three and a half hours away. So I did see you on the weekends, but, um, during the week it was a lot of FaceTiming and calling, um, at night to catch up. But I think... I think like it it does build that communication skills when you do have to call them and that sort of thing. But um, it also builds some support and trust. I mean, I think you really, I mean, you do need to trust your partner in general, but uh, it definitely, it definitely shows that you trust them when you're like, oh yeah, go have fun on your solo trip. I trust you, have fun. And yeah, and let them pursue uh, the things that they want to do or let them enjoy their solo travel and see the sites that they want to see and that sort of thing, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. And I think, um, I mean, we were obviously in the same time zone, right? For this sort of, uh, for this sort of trip. (laughs) But when you travel to France, we are obviously not in the same time zone. Um, Yeah. So yeah, you do really have to like carve out that time to, to communicate and um, to catch up with each other and, and all of that kind of stuff, which is, um, which kind of builds upon that. Yeah. So, I mean, and you definitely build in that time still to to um, enjoy with your partner while you're traveling solo, whether that is FaceTiming or calling or something like that or sending them a text or something to just to still keep that connection and, and to to communicate with them while you're while you're out and about. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. I like to share photos with you whenever I'm traveling and you're always like, oh, I'm so jealous, especially when I go to Les Domago in Paris without you. That is my nightmare. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I can't take it home. <laughs> and I always bring back stuff for you, too. Yeah. Yeah. Normally an attitude. 
Okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Normally wine. <laughs> Normally wine. <laughs> Normally wine and sometimes treats. But yeah, so again, uh, you make me sound like a like <laughs> like the no, little oh my kid. Gosh. Sometimes if you're really good while I'm gone. Oh my gosh. I'll I get brought you a, you a bunch. Of, I brought you a bunch of candies and like jelly no, and like I know, stuff I like know. that from France. I'm just giving you a hard time. I had a whole care package for you when I came home. I know. Yeah. It was very nice. Okay. <laughs> anyway, but it builds support and trust and it's a it's a great way to learn better communication as a couple when um, someone is traveling solo and someone's at home Um, or you're both on your own solo travels. Number five, and this is my favorite, it makes travel better when you do get to travel together. I think it, I think it makes it that much sweeter and you get to enjoy it because as much as I travel without Christopher, um, my favorite times are when I'm with Christopher traveling. Naturally. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um and yeah I mean I think that the times apart really really bring us closer together when we get to get back together and I wholeheartedly agree like yeah. there's there um there were a lot of times where I was like man I wish Catherine were here yeah like you would have really enjoyed this or like there was one night that I ate um right on the water or I really like when we like reunite post travel too like whenever um first of all when he drops me off at the airport I usually know I'm gonna have a note in my suitcase somewhere which is really sweet and I look forward to that and whenever you come pick me up you park the car and you come inside and it's always really sweet to come and see you um after a long trip and I don't know. It gives us, it also gives us more things to talk about. You know, you come home and you get to talk about your travels and things that you've done. And I really enjoy that. I know what you mean. There's that. Um, I don't know if it's I, I don't think it's like necessarily a saying, but I know it's something that like will frequently pop up on like sitcoms or shows or something like that. Right. Like eventually you're um, together so long that like, you know, all of each other's stories. Mm-hmm. Right. Where it's like, a, hey, have I ever told you about the? And you're like, yeah like 18 times it's like oh okay but yeah it does it does kind of allow you to to bring something new to the table to share a new experience um which i think is is nice and it also is kind of a way i talked last episode um the gift guide episode about how i'm a big like travel inspiration person Mm -hmm. um and it it kind of allows you to to inspire your your partner your significant other what have you um to maybe go back with you to that destination because of how much you enjoyed it. Yeah. It does make it like, yeah, like I said, it makes travel better when you're, when you're together again. Um, and, um, when you get to travel together, it makes it that much sweeter. I agree. About how much, how nice it is. But so the five reasons, uh, to travel solo while in a relationship is that you're an independent person. You can embrace your own travel style. Sometimes your schedules don't align, it builds support and trust and communication skills, and it just makes travel better when you get to be together in the, like, when you get to travel together in the future. Yeah. Um, let me ask you a couple questions that okay. have popped to mind over the episode. Okay. Is there a trip that we have gone on together that no holds barred, you're like, you know what, maybe I would have enjoyed that more if it were just me? Does anything, like, immediately pop to mind or not really? I was going to say New York. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> um, I love you. And I think we'd have a lot more fun going back to New York now. But that was our first trip together as a couple. Like, it was our first trip ever together. And we did not know each other's travel styles. And honestly, I feel like we just need a do-over for New York in general. But at the time, that was when we were in different travel mindsets. But also... I felt bad because my go, go, going. So I was like, oh, it's New York. There's so much to see. There's so much to do. I want, And I was so excited because I had been there before. And I was so excited to be like, oh, look at all these really cool things that I did last time that I was going to show you. But it really overwhelmed you because it was a lot. And I was trying to do a lot of things at once. At, at so many things at once that we didn't get to do the one thing I wanted to do. Yeah. Because yeah. I don't think you had to get there an hour early. That's what it said I on the website. I stand by it. I stand by it because I just walked on the last time I did it. Oh, well, I mean. And it was in the middle of summer. I know. But yeah. <sighs> um, is there a... Wait, what about you? A trip that we have taken that... Mm-hmm. Not that immediately pops to Great. mind. Right. <laughs> now I'm... <on. laughs> 
Not that New York, really... Christopher. No. <laughs> no, I mean, I would probably say that. Yeah. Um, just because I would have gotten to do what I wanted to do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, the one thing you're like, hey, what do you want to do this trip? And I'm like, oh, I would like to go to Ellis Island and see the Statue of Liberty. And you're like, yeah, cool. We're not going to do that. No, I t- we tried. <laughs> Um, so, we just yeah. need to do New York over. It's not that I would want to go without you because I've been to New York by myself before. Yeah. It's just we need to do it over. That's fair. <laughs> I think that, um, but yeah, I, I think that that's a fair one. I also would say that maybe some of our, um, maybe some of our races that we've run. So it's kind of a, del- it's like a delicate balancing act, right? Because we have the scratch off map and we have a rule that like you don't get to scratch it off unless we've both gone there together Mm -hmm. um so there's the balancing act of wanting to experience it together but for some of the races i think that you and i like approach races very differently um like you're you're more of a like oh i'm just gonna like run and get it done well i'm just like i'm here i'm just here to finish right your goal is like i want to go as fast as i possibly can (laughs) and mine is like i just want to finish well and i think that also the reason why i'm saying like a race is because i think just very naturally like we travel together and we're like okay well like the two of us are going to go to dinner Mm -hmm. right or hang out and i think that if we if i were alone i would maybe spend like a little bit more time at the expo like go to some of the events like maybe go to like the pre-race dinner and like talk to other people who have run um other marathons like i remember at the little rock marathon i met a gentleman who had run a marathon in antarctica which i was like blown away from i could have talked to him the whole time but like we were going to do something and that's another point about like solo travel versus being in a couple traveling, uh, even when you were in Naples, you sat at the bar by yourself one night and w- for dinner and met a bunch of people yeah. and started chatting. I remember one time I was traveling solo in Athens and I got dinner by myself and I was sitting in a restaurant. The waiter, I, I, the server, I think he felt bad for me. I don't know. I was having a great time reading my Kindle and he gave me a free glass of wine, which was great. But then I got to talking with this couple next to me and we chatted for almost the whole dinner and it was it was a lot of fun. And, and, you know, I think, I don't know if this might be just like an American thing or, or something, but like, yeah, I think sometimes going by yourself to dinner, you, you, or even just tr- solo traveling, if you're in a group tour or something like that, you do meet other like-minded people for your instance, like running. Sure. Or, um, I've, I've, when I went to Savannah last year, I met another solo female traveler. We got to talking. We ended up doing, uh, we ended up visiting that, uh, cemetery together, Bonaventure, and we went out to dinner together because we met during a food tour. And yeah, it was neat to meet other like like minded people, too, that you probably wouldn't if you were in a couple because, you know, you tend to kind of stay to yourself or you meet other couples. You don't necessarily meet like individuals and start hanging out with them too much. Agreed. Just because most people. Yeah, you're more likely to chat and talk to people when you're by yourself than when yeah. you have someone to talk to and chat with so exactly. sitting beside you. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um is there a place that you would, um, that you're like thinking of that you're like, man, maybe that place would be good for solo travel. Um, whether it's like for anyone or whether it's just like, it's more personal to the two of us. What do you think? Um, a good solo travel place. I would say that if you're going to start, start somewhere, like in your home country. So for us in the U.S., I thought Savannah was a great place to travel solo. It's a very walkable city. Um, There's lots of great like food tours and things like that, but it's just a really cool city. It's really easy to navigate. And yeah, I thought that was a really great place, both, you know, as a woman traveling solo, but just traveling solo in general, uh, a place to go to. So I really recommend that. Even New York was a great place to solo travel. Um, Again, it's it's fairly easy to navigate. It's a grid system, and um, there's a lot to see and do by yourself, so it's easy to stay entertained in New York. Like, you're not going to get bored by yourself in New York City. Uh, there's plenty to see and do. Um, I really enjoyed, because I've solo traveled throughout Europe and stuff, too. I mean, I would stick to, like, kind of like a place that's easier to navigate by yourself, Um but I really liked Budapest and I also liked traveling solo around Athens too. 
or Athens and um, sorry, Greece, like because you just hop on the ferry. I met a bunch of Canadians um, that were traveling in Mykonos and we hung out all day and made friends and, and swam and stuff. So, yeah, I think that's a great place to like travel solo as well. Oh, so many good places. Yeah. Yeah. I think that um, kind of one that came to mind when I was asking the question that is not necessarily like personal to the two of us is Chiang Mai in Thailand. A I lot of a people, um, I mean, a lot of people visit there. I cannot tell you how many people we met in mm-hmm. Chiang Mai, um, both couples, um, people traveling by themselves. And I feel like that would be a very easy place to to travel solo because you're you're undoubtedly going to meet other people, chat, hang out, all of that kind of stuff. So I think that that would be a pretty easy one to... I could see that being a big one. And it's not as big and intimidating like Bangkok. Exactly. Like it's a smaller city. It's a smaller city, city. yeah. Yeah. Um, I think... Well, let me ask you that. Like, what about personally? Like, is there a place that you're kind of envisioning where you're like, I would not mind experiencing that on my own? I don't know. I don't... I mean, because again, I like when you travel with me. Um... The first thing that popped in my mind was like the Cotswolds and it's not because I think we would love the Cotswolds together, but I'm, but like go specifically for me, it would be going to like High Clare Castle probably by myself because then, or all the things that I geek out about that like you're probably not as excited about like Downton Abbey and like period history or whatever period dramas there it is or, or history like Tudor history, like going to Hever Castle and like, like where Anne Boleyn was from. Those places I think I could like geek out and like really take my time reading all of this because whenever we go to museums, Chris makes fun of me because I like read all the signs and he's just like, oh, I see it and or I've seen it. It's time to move on. Um, so I feel like I could actually really enjoy like taking my time with everything and reading and enjoying it um, because I know you're not necessarily interested in that. Um, but that's really all I can think of is stuff that I, I would just geek out over history wise that like you're kind of like meh. This is cool, but like, yeah, you wouldn't get as excited about. What about you? That makes sense. Um, the things that popped to mind for me were um, somewhere hiking. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't like hiking with me? I no. do like hiking <laughs> with you, but I think that we have different paces. Mm-hmm. Well, that's because I have short legs and you have really long legs. No, and I, I feel know. like I have to run just to walk next to you normally. I know, I know. Um, but like, I feel like, I don't know. Like, I always love being outside. I love um, running on my own. I don't listen to music, anything like that. So I feel like if I could, like, really get out there, like, get into the mountains, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, But, like, go at my pace also. Yeah. Um, That's fair. Yeah, that's something that came to mind. But also um, a beachside town where I could take surfing lessons. Um, we have been in a few situations where they have offered. I said you could do it when we were in Costa Rica. No, no, no. I know. But it's <laughs> it's always one of those like, hey, it's like a full day thing. Um, like, are you interested in doing it? And you're like, ah, not really. No. And I'm like, ah, okay. Well, like, we'll find something that like both of us want to do. And like, I mean, there was no shortage of things both of yeah, us wanted to do. Yeah, we had a blast do. still. Right. But just like kind of thinking about something like that, like knowing that you're not necessarily like incredibly interested in it. Um, We also just recently had a conversation about um, scuba diving, Mm -hmm. right? Where you're not necessarily interested in scuba diving, but I'm kind of um, curious about it. I think it would be interesting to go somewhere where um, like I could get certified, right? Especially Mm -hmm. if it's like something that you don't really have an interest in. It's maybe like a week trip Mm -hmm. or something like that where like I am just doing this. Um, I think that that could be kind of cool too. But like, it's like you said at the top of the episode, like really focusing in on something that you are passionate about that um, your, your partner or your significant other does not necessarily share that same level of enthusiasm. And even if you don't want to devote an entire big trip traveling solo again as a couple it's okay to have different things that you're passionate about sometimes you know like you wanting to go scuba diving or surfing that's not necessarily my thing I could hang back do something else sure if even on a trip you know if you're on a trip together and there's a day that you guys split off to do your own thing because it's both of you guys's vacations and maybe someone wants to go to the history museum and the other person wants to go scuba diving that's fine. Yeah, um, absolutely. And then when you come back together for dinner, you're like, what did you do today? Tell me all about that. Maybe convince the other person to go along with you next time. Um, 
Yeah. It's I not think that that's... I would never scuba dive. I think I would go on an assisted dive to kind of try it, but I feel like I have a lot of anxiety. I don't know if people probably noticed on this episode, but I have a lot of anxiety. So like, I feel like being like the whole breathing through that tube thing is, it would be really, really tough. That's fair. Yeah. Where I am very much like a, Especially when there's like sharks and things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I am much more of, I think, a thrill seeker. Like I will yeah. like toe the line of death. Um, Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that that's a good point too, is it doesn't necessarily have to be an entire trip that you're solo traveling for, but maybe just like a day excursion or something like that. Yeah. And it doesn't mean you don't love each other. I think I think a lot of people tend to think that when people have different interests and things, but... You can have a lot of very similar interests. We both like running. We do like hiking. We like adventure travel in some in some respects. We right. love we love a lot of certain destinations and things. But like again, I'm not terribly interested in scuba diving and getting certified or bungee jumping and running up and down mountains. I would hike up and down a mountain. Yeah, there it is. I just don't want to run it. <laughs> That's fine. No, but we we have a lot of trips that we are, are very similar and like a lot of things, and then there's stuff that I could take it or leave it when it comes to the scuba diving or and stuff. So yeah, that's not a big deal if that's what you want to do. And I want to go geek out over a castle. Exactly. <laughs> and that stuff is like the beauty that. of it. That is the beauty of it. Um, so that is traveling solo while in a relationship, guys. Um, let us know if you have any other tips or questions. You can let us know on Twitter at WW Honeymoon, Instagram at Worldwide Honeymoon, or email cat at WorldwideHoneymoon.com. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thanks, guys. Thanks for tuning in. And don't forget to rate and review our podcast. It takes less than a few minutes and really helps other people find us. Also, if you're enjoying this awesome free information on both the blog and podcast, when you're booking your next trip, head over to WorldwideHoneymoon.com slash resources and use the links provided. We earn a small commission at no cost to you when you book through these links. And these are all brands and companies we know, love, and use, like Skyscanner for finding the best flight prices, World Nomads for the best travel insurance, TripAdvisor for hotel bookings and reviews, and even Amazon for all of your travel purchases. Thank you for tuning in. We really appreciate it. Wherever you are, wherever you go, remember to make every day a worldwide honeymoon.